In North America, the majority of plants we consider to be really invasive are not native here. Many arrived by accident as contaminants in crop seed. Some were intentionally planted by European settlers for their medicinal value, and others were introduced as garden plants before they escaped and spread. These non-native plants are generally introduced without their natural enemies, the insects, mites, and pathogens that help keep their populations in check in their native ranges. A lack of natural enemies is thought to be one of the main reasons why some plant species become so invasive when introduced to areas outside of their native range. Classical weed biological control, often referred to simply as biocontrol, is the intentional use of an invasive plant's natural enemies to reduce its vigor and reproductive potential. This reduces the competitive advantage of many weed species and gives the competitive edge back to native or more desirable plants. The first intentional use of classical weed biocontrol dates back to the mid-1800s when scale insects were intentionally released and redistributed around India and surrounding countries for the control of invasive cactus species. Since then, over 500 biocontrol agents have been released on over 210 weeds in more than 95 countries worldwide. In the United States, the first biocontrol agent release was made in 1902. As of the year 2020, over 200 biocontrol agents have been introduced against 79 weed species. The discipline of weed biological control has changed greatly over the past 200 years. Some of the earliest organisms to be released were not thoroughly vetted before their release and were later found feeding on more than just their target weed. Since then, very strict regulations and testing standards have been established. At this time, in order to be approved for release in North America, numerous years of rigorous testing are required to prove that biocontrol agents are host-specific meaning they develop only on the target weed. Biological control is just one of many weed control methods practiced worldwide. More conventional control methods include spraying herbicides and physical removal such as tilling or hand pulling. Conventional methods have long been used in a crop setting, but they aren't always feasible or affordable for large tracts of publicly owned lands, difficult to access terrain, and areas containing sensitive vegetation. Conventional control methods are increasingly restricted or prohibited altogether in some areas, such as near water, and some weed species are developing resistance to herbicides available on the market. In contrast, approved weed biological control agents attack only the target weed. They're self-dispersing in rough or remote terrain, they provide continuous action without weeds developing resistance, and many can integrate well with other control methods. Because of this, Biological control is an important part of a cost-effective, long-term solution for large-scale weed management. Biological control does not eradicate target weeds and is not a quick fix for managing a weed infestation. Unlike herbicides, where visible damage can be seen within days or weeks of treatment, biocontrol generally takes at least four years before there are visible reductions in weed populations. Approved biocontrol agents may not be available for your target weed. When they are available and are released, results can vary. Biocontrol agents are living organisms, so they may not establish or thrive in all habitats and climates where their target weed is problematic. Some species are also highly susceptible to predation by birds, rodents, and other insects or mites, which can significantly impact their effectiveness. It's important to consider all of these variables when determining if biological control is an appropriate choice for your weed infestation. Some biocontrol agent introductions have resulted in spectacular reductions of their target weeds. For example, in Australia in the 1920s, invasive prickly pear cactus was smothering large tracts of land and spreading rapidly. Releases of the moth, Cactoblastis cactorum, effectively destroyed the majority of prickly pear infestations within a decade. This scale of destruction is uncommon for biological control, however. In some instances, biocontrol agents have had little to no impact on their target weeds for a variety of reasons. Most biocontrol programs are considered successful when the target weeds are still present 
but reduced to the point where the damage they cause is below an acceptable economic or ecological threshold. This graph illustrates the ideal results of utilizing weed biological control. Target weed infestations regularly fluctuate, but their levels are originally above the damage threshold where they cause economical and ecological harm. When biological control is successful, biocontrol agents increase in abundance until they help suppress the target weed to levels below the damage threshold. As local target weed populations are reduced, their biological control agent populations also decline due to starvation or the agents dispersing to other target weed infestations. In many biocontrol systems, there are fluctuations over time, with the target weed becoming more abundant, followed by an increase of its biocontrol agent until the target weed and biocontrol agent populations stabilize at a much lower abundance. Generally, it can take one to three years after release to confirm that biocontrol agents are established at a site, and even longer to cause significant impacts to populations of the target weed. For some weed infestations, five to 30 years may be needed for biological control to reach its weed management potential.